We're taking a look at the currency market now with Shireen Domeling, a macroeconomic strategist at Standard Bank. Shireen, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, we've seen uh, what a risky bets back on could do for the local unit. We had the unit move beyond that eight mark yesterday. So some strength are coming through, but then uh, it's attempted to break that 801, 802 level a couple of times this year before bouncing weaker each time. We're back above eight this morning again, Shireen. So what are you making of the kind of rand movement we're seeing? Well, yesterday we did see the mood um, fairly uh, positive on the back of the fact that chi the Chinese GDP data came out a little better than expected, and that ran firmed quite a bit um, on the back of the local manufacturing, sorry, mining ma uh, data which came mm -hmm. out yesterday, which really showed a modest improvement for the mining sector. We also saw the, saw the JSE record, um, record um, levels. Um, and that's really on the back of firmer commodity prices. So the exuberance that we saw yesterday really continued, um, and it really um, showed that the rand was uh, threatening to breach that eight rand level, which we did see. But towards the end of the day, the rand did retreat. The mood really seems um, fairly uh, risk on again today, which should be positive for the currency. But given the fact that there's quite a flurry of local data, which could pose some kind of event risk for, for the currency later um, towards the end of the day. Let's drill down into some of that local data that's being anticipated. CPI numbers, one of them. And uh, broadly, we've got inflation expected to rise to 6.2% year on year. Uh, your broad expectations on that front? A Standard Bank is expecting CPI to come in at about 6.3%, with the main drivers really remaining the food and transport components of that. Um, and in line with what the Reserve Bank has been saying, it's really the cost push pressures that's really driving um, inflation up. We do expect um, CPI to have averaged about 5% for 2011, and this is expected to have increased slightly to about 6.2% for uh, 2012. So Standard Bank is really um, slightly ahead of market expectations at uh, 6.3. What about on the retail sales data front? Uh, Shireen, because we've had some impressive numbers uh, come through from our retailers over the past week or so. This morning, Fashini coming through saying Christmas trading was above expectations across all divisions. Growth for December uh, of 17.3% uh, being clocked in and then same store growth of 11.4% coming through as well. A standard bank is fairly positive um, with regards to the numbers for November. We're expecting an increase of 7.9% from 7.4% in October, and it's also above market expectations of about 7.5%. We do believe that even though the consumer has adopted a cautious spending pattern over the past couple of months, that they started to pick up the pace of spending into the festive season. However, we don't um, believe that it uh, may be sustainable into the new year, um, as a number of, um, while well, the consumer still faces a number of headwinds that is likely to pressure um, spending going forward. Uh, if you look at the consumer confidence levels, for instance, it's still quite um, quite low. But if you consider that interest rates are also still fairly low, it could possibly push up um, spending um, in that regard. As you said, a flurry of data being anticipated. Uh, PMI numbers anticipated as well, Shireen. Uh, run us through your forecast there. Um, well, we do expect the PMI um, number to have remained above 50 in December, but it is a bit concerning that we're still seeing some pressure coming through from the employment subcomponent as well as the expected business conditions index. Yes, we did see the manufacturing data for November come out slightly higher than what was expected, and this is, um, a, as it takes its cue from the PMI data, we don't uh, believe that the PMI could sustain uh, fairly high levels in 2012, especially if you look at the fact that the PMI data from a number of um, developing and emerging market economies they're still struggling to maintain those high levels. So it's going to be still a challenging year for the manufacturing sector. Despite all that local data that's coming through, Shireen, we've got our eye firmly on what's playing out in the Eurozone territory today. Portugal tells Treasury bills in its biggest uh, debt auction uh, since last year's bailout. Germany uh, holds an auction as well. That, those through uh, coming through yesterday. Today we've got, uh, uh, today rather, we've got uh, all eyes on uh, uh, the Greek debt default uh, and the possibility of that looming. Your forecast on the euro front? Uh, well, we do. We, if obviously, if Greece does default, we could see some uh, well, severe pressure on the euro going forward. Um, and the fact that um, there has been all these talks about whether the eurozone um, and Greece is really going to default and the recessionary conditions there, we really need to see those actions really come through with regards to um, s uh, resolutions. Um, we have seen some. We have seen over the past couple of weeks considerable talk. But as we move closer to the March 20 um, deadline for Greece, it's really going to be um, a well, not really touch and go, but the uncertainty levels and volatility levels are going to um, uh, increase quite a bit as we move towards that. So there is going to be some pressure on the, the euro.